Oh my god, we finally got a big old trailer for the new Zelda game, and it kind of looks like the Witcher Zelda edition, which means I'm losing my sh** on today's Nerdist News. It's E3 time, baby! And you know what that means? Hype-worthy trailers galore for next year's hottest games. But one game that rules the hype arena right now, and that game, oh, it's gotta be The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I could go on and on about the franchise's importance to the gaming world at large, to Nintendo's survival as a company, and to the Wii U not uh, leaving behind a totally depressing legacy, but why waste time? Let's break down the big trailer and see what we can glean from Link's latest adventure. As the clip begins, we get a gorgeous look at this Zelda game's massive open world. It's got plains, it's got deserts, it's got mountains, it's got seas, and it's got them all in one ginormous map you can roam around freely. We see Link on horseback, and you might assume that's Impona, but it might not be for reasons we'll get into in, in, in a minute, as well as a big old hunking skeletal beast roaming the ridge side. Notice all the weather effects too. Rain, lightning, snow. Count on the climate factoring into gameplay big time, as the studio has confirmed you'll need to change outfits to stay warm or cool as you move through deserts, snowy mountains, and the sea. And lightning will even be attracted to your metallic weapons in a storm, so you have to switch switch up your tactics there. As the pretty environment shots continue, you might notice that they look a bit mm, barren. That doesn't seem to be purely because Nintendo wants to show off its lovely new land. This place looks like it's crumbling. We've got broken castle spires, ruins, tentacled beasts frozen in place and covered in moss. Is this a post-apocalyptic Zelda game? Something close to Shadow of the Colossus? Uh, during a live stream of some gameplay, we learned that Breath of the Wild takes place, quote, centuries after Twilight Princess, end quote, late in the child timeline of the Zelda canon. So yeah, it sounds like something real bad went down and we'll be investigating just what it was and how to put things back to the way they used to be. As the trailer continues, an off-screen voice intones, Open your eyes. Wake up, Link. My sweet little boy, she doesn't say that part, which we heard again during the gameplay demo where we saw Link awaken some kind of glowing device. Technology is being introduced to the world of Zelda this time and it seems like Link has slept through some apocalyptic shit in his weird stasis tank. Stop it with the weird stasis tanks, people. It never turns out well for those guys. Never, unless you're that really smooth guy from the Stargate movie. Then you can take over Egypt? But whatever, let's move on to the action. And we see lots of it. Check out all the cool new stuff we can do. We can glide, we can capture and ride atop wild horses that are not necessarily Impona, as you may have assumed at the top of the trailer. And we can climb seemingly everything. We can strip down to our skivvies and swim, and we can hunt boars, and you can set up traps with beehives, drop boulders onto moblins, chop down trees, cook. Heck, we, as we learned from the demo, there's a huge foraging and crafting component too. It looks pretty deep and with every tool and every weapon or piece of armor flaunting a damage rating. With the creators claiming that there will be a minimal backstory and that you'll explore the narrative at your own leisure in bits and pieces as you explore the world in one of its hundreds scattered, quote, shrines of trials, this really does sound like a more modern open world RPG than any Zelda game has been in the past. Moving right along, we saw some cool new Zelda gadgets in the trailer too. A Book of the Dead looking device called the Sheik Slate, as in Zelda's secret identity, chic hmm. was revealed and it looks like it can grant access to dungeons and lift weird climbable pillars out of water and we also saw a magnet that can lift up metal rods and drop them on the heads of enemies man I can't wait to give monsters concussions. And finally, the end of the trailer showed off some of the most intriguing imagery, as we saw what looked like to be an early game Link with a wooden shield watching a faraway castle get consumed by some evil magic and some of the game's patented slow-mo combat in which Link can gain an advantage by getting in an extra few fury strikes if his timing is right and one of those mysterious guardians come to life and swing its tentacles all around and we saw a giant rock monster and some familiar baddies, the Stalfos and the Choo Choo's, and and most awesome of all, a Link rocking a full-on suit of armor over his tunic. Hell to the yeah, load me up with that shit. That Hyrule shit. That's too big for child Links, but good enough for teen Link. And last but not least, the Master Sword. Rusted and still. Time has been unkind to Hyrule, but as the demo Nintendo showed off, it, it took place on what they're calling the Great Plateau, the birthplace of Hyrule. We're hoping Link can turn back the clock and make things right, or at least uncover whatever this mystery is. But what do you guys think? Are you digging this unconventional modern take on a Zelda game, kind of like Witcher Zelda edition? Oh yeah. Did you catch anything in the trailer that we missed? Let's discuss. 
Want more E3 news? Keep it locked to Nerdist.com all week long. You want to know some weird Zelda science stuff? With all the different timelines that are floating around and who did what at what age, how can you make sense of that? I think you can make sense of it with quantum mechanics. So check out my episode on that very topic on Because Science and get your Hyrulean mind blown. <laughs>